Hi, uh, folks in video land. I'm not going to do this every day, these, uh, these vlogs, but I thought I'd try out something that I thought about in my brain, but I uh, want to see if it really works in real life. Um, what I'm going to do here is I put a new article up on my blog, uh, hardcorezen.info, and I am going to do kind of a video version of that blog. What I posted today was an article or a, a piece of writing by Kodo Sawaki. And the, the place I got this article from was, was here. This is a reproduction of a folder I found in the library of Tassajara Zen Mountain Monastery in Northern California, which is part of the San Francisco Zen Center. Uh, this uh, this copy was made for me by Greg Fain, who's the what they call the Tanto, the sp I guess you'd say spiritual director, for want of a better way to phrase it, of, uh, of Tassajara. And uh, he's a friend of mine. And I just found this on the shelves there, kind of like, what's that? And it's uh, essays by Kota Sawaki compiled. I don't know if you can see it there, compiled by Rick Dreyer uh, for. Blanche Hartman, who just passed away recently, and Kosho McCall, March 2004. Other than that, I don't know uh, where it comes from. It contains a lot of translations of articles by and a couple about Kodo Sawaki. They appear to me to be maybe columns from a magazine. I, I, I know that Sawaki wrote a newspaper, a regular newspaper column when he was alive. He died in, I think, 1966 or thereabouts, so this has been probably in the 60s. And uh, he, um, so he published that, and, and maybe these are English versions. Maybe they appeared in English simultaneously, for all I know. I, I really don't know. And there's no, and there's no indication within the book and, and some of them seem to come from different places. They're written in different, they're, they're in different fonts and different sizes and things. They seem to be uh, from, from various places. So last night when I was supposed to speak at Angel City Zen Center, I decided I'd read a talk by, or one of these, one of these articles by Kodo Sawaki out loud and open it up for comments. So I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the article out loud to you fine folks who, uh, and you can also go to my blog if you want to read it silently to yourself. People only grow angry because they think of their five feet eight inches of body as a possession. Yet when the sutras talk about it, all they say is that it is a big bag of stinking skin. When somebody in a rage shouts, who do you take me for? Or who do you think you're talking to? I think to myself, to a big bag of stinking skin. Human beings tear each other apart because of their opinions. Politicians tear each other apart. Husband and wife tear each other apart. The whole world is full of tearing. Why? Just because of the vanity of our egos. Even monks and nuns and priests tear each other apart. Is there life after death? Is the soul eternal or not? All of that is nothing but trivial jokes, ego stories. If we stop paying attention to the ego, such nonsense as eternity or not eternity ceases to exist for the soul. This degenerate world is the reason why professional liars succeed today. But if we observe impermanence, there are no more lies, and where there are no more lies, religion appears. You can see your image in a mirror, but how do you see the mind that not even a mirror can reflect? It's possible in Zazen. Nothing reveals the ego like Zazen. The purer the Zazen, the more transparent, the better you can see the illusions of your ego. Our corruption is that we are cut off from the universe, and our illusion is that we confuse the cut-off ego with the one that originally is not separate from the cosmic system. The roots of that true ego are the same as those of sky and earth, the same body and same mind as all sentient beings. This true religion 
which has no right side or wrong side, no inside or outside, is transparent from sky to earth, is the secret of Zen. Everything must become completely transparent, me and you, past and present and future. In terms of reality, this means that our life today, our attitude now, gives life to the past. If our attitude is false, then all those who have fed us and taught us, all those we have met and known, have acted solely in order to produce that falseness. If our attitude is right, whatever they have done, they did solely in order to produce that rightness. The limits of the self are truly beyond any imagining and fill the sky, earth, and the whole universe. In terms of religious faith, Space and time have nothing to do with it. It is only right now that we can use this ordinary human body to practice Zazen with Shakyamuni, with the Buddhas of the whole universe in ten directions. Practice Zazen with mountains, rivers, and trees. That's why I practice Zazen. Sitting like this is what makes the self become transparent, makes us able to see without limits, in harmony with sky and earth, and it is what gives the self a total vision of the whole universe. That is the way of silent sitting and the principle of shikantaza. And shikantaza means just sitting. So that's the article. I, I really uh, love this little piece. I, I like oh, pretty much everything I've read by uh, Koto Sowaki. Koto Sowaki was my teacher's teacher, Gudo Nishijima's teacher. To me, the best part of this article is the part that goes... Our corruption is that we are cut off from the universe, and our illusion is that we confuse the cut-off ego with the one that originally is not separate from the cosmic system. The roots of that true ego are the same as those of sky and earth, the same body and the same mind as all sentient beings. I really, I really love that because when I was a young Zen student, I, I thought my teachers were saying weird, cryptic, mysterious things deliberately to just try to be strange or something. I couldn't make much sense out of them. Later on, after practicing for a while, I realized that those teachers were actually saying very directly to me the whole truth uh, of, of the universe and, and where it came from and where it was going, answering all my questions, basically. But I was just kind of too, too dumb to uh, figure out, not dumb, let's say. I was kind of too dense to figure it out, or too steeped in one way of looking at things to figure it out. And here it was all laid out for me. The other part I like is when he says, if our attitude is false, then all those who have fed us and taught us, all those we have met and known, have acted solely in order to produce that falseness. If our attitude is right, whatever they have done, they did solely in order to produce that rightness. I really like that. I think uh, I think we have a duty not to be false uh, to ourselves and to the the world that we encounter and speak to. And so there's there's my video version of the blog, uh, and uh, if you enjoyed it, leave a comment. Um, if you want me to continue doing this with each of my blog pieces, maybe I can do it. We'll see. Uh, I've also got a Patreon page, and if I can figure out how to do that, I will link to that, and and uh, and also figure out how to give special rewards. I have not figured out how to give special rewards to Patreon uh, supporters, uh, but I've only been on Patreon for like two days, and most of those days I haven't looked at it because it just confuses me. So, uh, see you next time. Bye.